Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Amsterdam. But before we do, we want to make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you can see all of the great stuff that we have coming out. Now, Amsterdam is designed by Stefan Feld and it is published by Queen Games. It is, as you can see, the second in the City Collection. That's right. Okay, this is the City Collection. The first one we've already talked about, that was Hamburg. That was based off another one of Stefan Feld's games called Bruges. The same thing is going on here. We've got Amsterdam. This is based off of a previous design of his called Macau. It's kind of the updated new version of that. It has been out of print for a while, so if you've ever played it or have heard of it, um, this is going to sound awfully familiar. And if you haven't and you want to get Macau, this is probably the cheaper, easier way <laughs> to, to get that game at this point. All right, so basically there's a lot going on here. Um, you're drafting cards. You've got some pickup and deliver going on. Um, we got an engine building situation. There's a, there's a lot going on. Let me give you a quick overview of how it works. I can't do a full teach, unfortunately, just because that would take all day. <laughs> uh, but let me give you an overview so you guys can understand what we're talking about, and then we'll come back and do the review. There's kind of a lot going on in this game. There are several different boards that you're going to be interacting with, so I'm going to kind of show them to you one at a time. This first one here is the resource board. All of your different resources are here. We also have our different action tokens. There is our money, the goldens over there. We have penalty tokens over here, which you do not want to take. We also have some multipliers over there because all the resources are unlimited. We have a spot for six dice over here. Here are the six dice. We're going to roll all of them. And what's going to happen is these are the resources that are going to be available to us based off of the number on the dice. This board right here is where we're going to distribute our resources to, and it's kind of going to push them out to us one turn at a time. We're going to start with one resource in the one spot and two resources in the two spot at the beginning of the game. So let's just kind of show that here. And now we're going to draft new resources. Based off of the number of pips on a dice, you get to have that many resources. However, it's going to go into that location. So for instance, if we were to take the purple here, you're going to get five purple resources. We can get one of the large cubes here, which represents five, and put it in the five spot on our individual board. You can just take two dice's worth. So let's take the orange as well. We'll take three of the individual orange cubes and put them on the three spot. After you've taken your two choices, you're going to rotate this once. Whatever's in the open location, you're going to take that as the resources that you can use for that round. The next board I want to show you is where we're going to draw our cards. At the beginning of each round, based off of the number of players, we're going to select some of these cards, and we're basically going to give them to whoever's the first player, whoever's in first position. They're going to choose one of those cards, pass them to whoever's in the next position, and so on and so forth. So every player is going to get one card every single turn. This board also acts as a round keeper. We have a little track over here. This is going to slide down every round. It's going to tick down the rounds, and also it's going to highlight rule changes for each round. For the first seven rounds, basically you're going to get extra points, kind of diminishing, for each delivery you make on the main board. And then also, uh, this, the later rounds, 8 through 12, basically as the kind of the round timer ticks down, uh, you're not going to be able to use all the dice that are on your board. So, for instance, uh, when you only have five rounds left, a six dice doesn't do you a lot of good. So, any sixes become a one. So on and so forth until the very last round, where basically every dice just is automatically rolled as a one. We also have these market tiles. At the beginning of each round, what we're going to do is we're going to flip one of them over. This is going to be an available action to you at the beginning of each round. What you can do is you can do whatever it says. In this particular case, it's you can spend three coins in order to get five points. Each one of them is different, and each turn you're going to see a new selection. Uh, the second half of the game, you're going to see kind of a, a ramp up in uh, costs and in victory points that you can make out of those tiles. Here is your personal player board. Basically, this has different spots for storage. So over here is where you're going to be able to keep all of your coins. This is your boat. There's a boat on the board. And basically, what's on this particular player board represents what's actually on the boat that's from around the board. You also have your little uh, shields over here, your crests. You're going to be laying those on the board as well, kind of claiming areas. It's kind of an area control thing going on. And then also, we have the top of the board, and we have the bottom of the board. So what's going to happen is, as you gain cards, you're going to put them on the bottom of your board. Every round, you're going to keep on gaining cards. These are cards that are not yet built. They're not, quote, activated yet. You activate them when you pay the costs that are in the middle of the card and move them to the top of your board. The cards all have different effects. Some of them are end-game scoring. Some of them are one-time abilities when you build them. Some of them are actions that you can take on your turn. So the one we built up here at the top, we activated it. Now what we can do is every turn, we can put one of these windmill tokens on it. We can spend a gray cube in order to gain one coin. That token just represents that you already used it for that turn. You cannot use it again. Cards like this, however, once you build them, you get a one-time benefit. This particular one says you can move up on the boat track five spaces. 
it's important that you keep on building those cards as you get them. You have five slots down below here, but if it ever comes a time where all five of those slots are full and you get another card, you're going to take one of those penalty tokens, which is bad news. That's negative points at the end of the game. Also, at the end of the game, for every one of those cards that are still down here at the bottom, you're going to get another one of those tokens. The last way you can get tokens is on our individual wheel. If you ever have a time where you put out an empty uh, selection and you have no cubes that you gain that round, you're going to get a penalty token for that as well. Also, every player is going to get some awesome player aids. It's going to describe all the rounds in detail, as well as some end of the round upkeep and into the end of the game scoring. So those are very important to kind of keep you going as the game goes on. All right, here's the main player board. This is where all of your actions are going to kind of take place. By looking at it, it's very, very busy. There's a lot going on, but by the time you kind of break it down, it simplifies it a little bit. So over here, we have our turn order track. That's kind of going through at the middle of the town. Uh, as you move up on that track, that's going to determine the turn order, but also every time you cross one of these bridges, you're going to gain some victory points, which is fantastic. One of the things that you can do on your turn is you can pay the cubes listed on one of these city blocks. What you get to do is you get to take uh, the, the resources listed there, you get to put it on your board, and you get to place one of your crests on that spot on the board. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to connect and make a, a blob of your colors all connecting as best as you can. At the end of the game, there's a big bonus. The more of those things that you connect, the more of those city blocks that you're able to connect, the more points you're going to get. And then also you're going to get resources as well. So pay attention to this part of the board. That's where you're going to want to get a lot of your resources and your points. As an alternative to putting those goods on your boat, you can also put them over here in the black market. What that allows you to do is you can either gain a uh, resource of your choice, one of the cubes, or two coins. Now, there's only nine spots, one of each kind of resource available, uh, so once that spot is filled, no more of that particular resource can be added. Out here on the top half of the board, this is where we're going to be delivering all of our goods. So each one of, these little, of the goods down here has a spot that it belongs to up above over here. So for instance, we have the barrels over here. The first time you deliver, it's going to be worth four points. And it kind of diminishes from there. There are also four wild spots on the board, which are worth a very, you know, a lot of points. So you want to use those as much as possible, but each one of those wild spots can only hold one good, whereas the items that are specific to that particular good can hold three of that good. We also have meeples over here at the top of the board as well. When you go to one of those ports, you can pick up a meeple and you can deliver it to the spot it wants to go to. So we have the yellow meeple over here. It wants to be delivered to the yellow port over here. When you pick up a meeple, you're going to be able to, first of all, take a coin. And when you drop it off, you're going to be able to put it over here in what they call the magazine. The first person that gets delivered is going to get nine points, then seven, then five. And then from there on out, every meeple that you deliver is worth three points. So again, the game is going to last 12 rounds. You're going to take all the points that you've already earned. And then you're going to get some endgame points based off of how many of your city blocks you've connected, how many resources you're left over with, and any endgame cards that you have that are going to give you extra points as well. You're going to add all that up, and whoever has the most points wins the game. Can I just say that I loved that resource reel. I loved it. I remember seeing something like that in a game like two or three years ago. I had never seen it before and I just absolutely loved it and I loved it in this one too. I like how it populated with the dice and, and there was like luck but not really that much luck and how you can be like oh my gosh I'm gonna put all these six right here. I'm gonna have an awesome turn. Turn. Turn, not charm, not turn on butter. I'm gonna have an awesome turn. But then you have to like wait forever for that awesome turn. But also you don't wanna get those negatives. So you gotta put some of the little stuff in there too by the time it comes there. But then that like awesome one happens, but then like nothing happens because you based it for that. Oh my gosh, loved it. Yeah, you definitely need patience <laughs> in, order, in order to make that wheel work. I really enjoyed making the synergies happen in the, the cards, right? You might try to get a card that says uh, you're going to get a, a free cube. And then you might get a card that says you can discard a cube of a certain color for, for some money. And then you may have a card that says you can get some money uh, and turn it into points or whatever the case is. So you have this kind of this chain reaction of actions that you can get through these cards that are all going to helpfully synergize with one another and make your best possible strategy happen. Now, there might be some times where you just you kind of just need to buy a cheap card that doesn't really work with your strategy just so you can kind of continually build yeah. those up because you don't, so you wanna, don't get negatives. Yeah, you don't want to get those penalty <laughs> yeah. tokens. That's bad news. Um, but yeah, I love trying to find those strategies and those combinations to get those synergies happening to maximize your strategy. 
I really like what they're doing with the City Collection. Um, if you've played any of the West Kingdom games, if you've played more than one, I should say, you know that they have the same iconography throughout all of their games. The same icons mean the same things regardless of what the game is. And that makes it really easy to learn the game, to understand the game, especially if you have all of them and you have it out. Like, you, you're already familiar with that. They're doing the same thing in this, and I really appreciate it, and I really like it. Even when we started playing the game and, and we're, um, Ryan's reading the rule book and we're setting it up, we kind of already understand what's happening purely based on the fact that the iconography is the same to Hamburg. So I just really like that that's the direction they're going with that. And it probably just makes it super easy to cut out all like all the same molds. <laughs> yeah, like I would love it if they like uh, made a kit where you could just buy all the games, but they duplicated or they got rid of the duplicates. So there's like, this, just, there's six uh, dice in Hamburg. Just the maps, basically. Yeah, there's six <laughs> dice in Hamburg and then there's six the identical six dice in, in yes. I am yeah. damn. So I think that you could, yeah. if you could combine those, that would be a lot of fun. And I do want to say, even with that same iconography, they're not at all the same game. Right. They're like, they're very different. Uh, the pick up and deliver is a mechanism that I really enjoy, but I don't really see it as often as I would like. Uh, so the fact that this had some pick up and deliver elements in it was really cool. And it did it in a unique way because you're not like, you don't like have a little boat and then you're putting things on the boat and then moving them around and then putting more things on the boat and then eventually dropping it off. That, that kind of thing is happening, but it's a little bit more, um, it's different. So they have a whole area control side of the map. That's where you're gathering the resources from. That's putting it onto your player board. So then you, once your boat is moving around, what your player board kind of represents what your board is holding. So then you can pick up a couple of those workers. You can hold two of those workers. You can hold a limited amount of tiles on your boat, but you can only put the tiles from one side of your board onto the boat part of your board when you're at one of the various ports. So... I thought that was a really clever way of kind of pictographically showing that and the way the pick up and deliver worked. Um, I just love pick up and deliver and this was this was neat. Um, so I did find out while we were playing this game and in one of our plays, um, a little over halfway through the game, um, it was really evident that there's no way I would be able to win. And I don't mind losing games. I probably lose the majority of the games that we play, but I need to feel like I can win. And when you feel like you can't win, when you know you can't win, I should say, and you know, I was <laughs> justified in my thoughts on that. But anyway, <laughs> when you feel like you can't win and you still have a good like third of the game left to go, that's like a really horrible feeling. And I did not really enjoy that. That wasn't in all of our gameplays, but it was extremely prominent and that's like the taste I have in my mouth. I think the special when we added in some of the expansions. Yes. Yeah. I felt like that was even that, that was prominent. Um I will want to warn you guys this game has a very slow start to it. You have very few resources, yeah. no energy no synergy, no your engine hasn't been built up at all. The first few turns are let's face it, they're boring. They are <laughs> unfun. It is not fun playing them. We were really confused like when we first played. Like the first two or three rounds were like was did we do that right? <laughs> like, was that it? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's going to feel very slow. It, it was it was, it was boring. It was it was frustrating, in fact. Like, there was all this cool stuff that we wanted to do. You'd look out and see, like, there's all these cards kind of stacking up that I yeah. can't pay for. And there's all these, uh, you know, things I want to take over. And there's all this boat movement I want to do with the boat. And I can't pay for it yet. However, there comes a point with maybe around halfway through the game where all of a sudden, all those resources that you've been putting on that wheel finally start hitting and that's where the game really starts for me um uh so keep in mind very very slow start it is it is painful <laughs> but yeah. it's also very very satisfying when you have you know 15 cubes that you're working with you can do a ton of actions buy a ton of cards trigger a lot of those events really make things happen so if you can grind through that first half the second half is is, is very enjoyable All right um well overall i thought this game was was fine it really is a fine game it is definitely on my lower end of all my felt games like if we were to re-rank our felt games this this would be on the bottom like that's it's it's a fine game it really is it just like didn't work for me you mean when we uh re-rank our felt games if we re-rank <laughs> our felt games we've played a lot of felt games we like them yeah. so speaking of uh macau let's compare it to macau for just a minute um I played Macau uh, at Geekway to the West, the Fantastic Con, and Origins uh, as well. And this is a game that 
it needed an update, you know. It was it was really cool. There's some really novel things, you know. They talk about that that you know, that resource wheel. That's so cool. Uh, <laughs> but um, Amsterdam, I think, took it to the next level. It, it polished it up, like the the area control part of the map. That was it's just so much more forgiving and friendly in Amsterdam. You have options, especially when you're playing with a higher player count. You have you know you know still some area that you can work with. I felt like in Macau it was really easy to kind of like cut the board in half, and then like you were just you were just kind of stuck, and you could never combine things the way you needed to. Um, and also, it was, it was kind of it took a long time to get your boat moving and getting the places you needed to. The way that the boat movement worked in this was was a lot more friendly, a lot more smooth. Um, again, you couldn't really do it until the second half of the game when you had enough actions to make it happen. But um, I, I really like what they did with this. I really liked how Feld took Macau, that inspiration in that core, kept it all the same, gave you all the same feelings, but made it more exciting uh, and more uh, accessible in Amsterdam. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can follow us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.